I've lived in garages, I've lived in, uh, I've squatted in offices, I've lived in a Volkswagen Jetta. I've lived out of a backpack for a long time, so I felt ready for like the open-endedness, and I like that feeling of freedom of not knowing what's gonna be the next thing. I wanted to be able to get out into, like deep out into nature and do art projects. My name is Christopher Ives. This is the Vitruvian van. Uh, Vitruvian van like Da Vinci's Vitruvian man. You've seen him like standing out like this. Um, it's called that because Vitruvian van, the Vitruvian man was all about the connection of art and nature and humanity. And that was kind of the theme for the van too. So it's a 2014 GMC Savannah, uh, all wheel drive, 1500 with an automatic locking rear diff, the G80. This is Tulsi, my dog. We've been traveling together for almost seven years. Um, and this is where we live. So it's three quarter inch ply on the floor um, with a little bit of polyethylene closed cell foam insulation underneath. I'd measure like how high the blocks of wood were and then I'd sit here and then I'd like move my head around to see if like I was gonna hit anything and measure how much headroom I had. And I wanted to like make sure my knee wasn't gonna hit anything swinging in and out of here. Right now it's in a dinette kind of office kitchen hangout mode, um, but this also converts into a couch and a bed and a wider bed and a bigger table. It's very flexible and uh, has a lot of different configurations. I wanted something that could hold a lot of weight, like people all resting their arms on it, like plates and computers and stuff like that. So I designed this like table mount system. It basically just pops up off of this like bracket on the wall and then sits down on uh, some felt rails down here to become like a bed or a couch. The metal's all aircraft aluminum. Uh, it's all welded up and has some nice little gussets that kind of dis distribute the weight around. So I worked with like a little a local welder that I found, which was really helpful to be able to kind of go through that process because I didn't know what I was doing. Uh, this whole top and all the countertops is recycled walnut that was in uh, like an old um, mill yard in Connecticut where I grew up. Durability and natural, it was like a no-brainer for it. And I think it came out really nice. I think it, it looks really nice and has a nice warmth to it. Behind here, there's actually a cabinet that opens up and there's a big cedar chest that comes all the way down the inside of this for like uh, blankets and pillows and stuff like that. And in the morning, I pop the table up when it, from the bottom and put it into this uh, mode and, you know, sit here for work, views out the, the windows, uh, eat here, cook here. Um, it's kind of the everything table. One of the best experiences in, in the van build actually was putting the window in uh, for two reasons. One of them was I was scared to do it. I had never cut through metal before um, and I just bought this van and it was a lot of money and <laughs> it turned out it wasn't that hard. It was pretty easy to do. Like I measured a hundred times and double checked a hundred times, but like once I had it lined up, it was super easy actually to cut the hole out and it's double paned. Uh, plastic, so has better insulation value, has a built-in bug screen, um, has a built-in sunshade, and you can also clip them together and like move it wherever you want, um, which I love. I think it's awesome. You can also, when it comes down, you can lock it in like half out, which this was something I had never thought of, but was a great thing that turned out that, you know, if you're driving in a car, you know, if you open the window on the, on the driver's side, the window like blasts you in the face, but if you crack the back window, you know, like kind of sucks through. So I realized that I didn't have that in a, in a van with only two windows. But the nice thing is if I crack this open just like that, it makes this amazing kind of like breeze through and opening the window and like having your arm out then and you just get this like nice little breeze and it's all because of that. <laughs> this, I had the, this idea from the beginning. I wanted to have indirect lighting in the van. So I built this just out of uh, some scrap plywood I had and some reflective tape and little spacers. And so there's just a single track of LEDs that runs around the whole thing. It's 5,000 lumens, um, can get really bright. It's daytime right now, so you don't see it that well. But the nice thing is it also changes color temperature. So you can, if you're taking photography in here, you can, you can get geeky and like match the color temperature to the outside. Um, or just, you know, daytime, it's nice to have a bluer light. It, it just feels right. And then at nighttime, it's nice to have a warmer light. It feels nice. And then I just have a regular uh, Max Air fan. It has like an automatic thermostat thing, so it'll open at a certain temperature and, and vent the van. 
but it's like, it's really rattly. The buttons are really finicky and like don't always work when you hit them. And just like overall, it seemed like kind of a lot of money for a fan. It's like, it's over 200 bucks. And I think they've, they've been around for a really long time, but um, for anybody in the fan manufacturing industry who's watching, you should make a better van. Like it's de definitely needed uh, an update. Let's get some like digital stuff going on or like Wi-Fi connection so we can like vent the fan when we forget and our dog's in the car or something. That would be great. <laughs> so for making money on the road, I'm a communications consultant and media producer. I mostly work with nonprofits and artists and you know, if they have a story they want to tell or they're trying to like market something or, or launch a new thing or try to build a community of some kind or something around those things, I'll, I'll help them produce media that could be websites and, and things like that. So I'll usually take on like one project or client a month and that's usually enough to pay for gas and pay the bills and stuff. The nice thing with media work is like, is you, you can do it on the road. I mean, you don't, all you really need is a computer and internet connection. I have a little hotspot. I use my phone to tether for Wi-Fi. Um, and if I have a lot of files, I go to a library, <laughs> you know, to send off. So welcome to the back of the van. This is kind of the utility area. In here, we have my food storage. And I've got a little touch light in here that lights up and I've got food and then deep storage down in here. I just use this kind of like a nightstand a little bit. Um, so like books and I'll like put my glasses here at night, my light switch and, and then up here, this is all my clothes. I just got two clothes cabinets. Um, so they're just on little hinges that pop up. And these are cool. These were like little off cuts from doing the countertop. So I made these, these walnut pulls for the drawers. The slide, when you open up the food, it closes off this other side. And when you close this, it opens up the other side. And then under this side, I have a cabinet area that's um, just a storage cubby. I keep like towels and trash bags and things like that down there. I also have the light there particularly so that it can be either used up in the front dinette area or if I turn it back here, it's a work light essentially. I got a cooler right now because I had a cooler um, before the build and I wanted to try that first because it's cheaper and easier than having a 12 volt fridge. Um, but if you can get block ice, you know, this will take 30 pounds of block ice, seven gallons of water. I've had this thing since back in when I was traveling like the Volkswagen Jetta. I don't, I don't have like a big stove or anything. I've had this jet boil for like 10 years, you know, rice, oatmeal, um, soups, you, can, you know, boil eggs. I steam vegetables. Like you can do a lot. I figure it takes about, took about a thousand hours of research and building to, to get to where it looks like right now. If you had the idea, just go for it. Just start doing it and see what happens. And that quickly for me turned into trying to make this as eco-friendly as possible. Um, the more I looked into it, the more I realized that there wasn't a lot of research on it. No one was really talking about it. Um, and it just felt nat nat like a natural thing to go together. Tiny houses and eco-friendly buildings already kind of happened, um, but I hadn't really seen it happening in the van community. So one of the more unique things I have in the van, I think is the insulation. It's made out of cork. It has R4 per inch, which is the same as like polystyrene. It's not the best, but it's not bad. Cause I made these uh, like an exoskeleton sort of a thing in the, in the wall and then built a floating, it's like a floating wall inside of the wall. So there's a wood panel and then like an air gap and then the center column of cork and then another air gap in the middle on the outside. I was trying to go for an eco-friendly approach. It was the only like completely natural product that I could find that was an insulator that was also rigid. Waterproof, it's mildew proof. Um, it's a little bit flexible, so it can kind of like give and, and take. It's performed really well. The feeling of like wood, like actually being able to feel the wood, like see the grain, makes it feel more like a home. To my roof deck. It's two two by twelves and a two by ten. It's dug fur, and they were like old seconds at a lumber mill. The whole deck's supposed to hold a thousand pounds, so you can get a good amount of people up here. And then, like, this is your view. You get to see the whole city. <laughs> Nothing special. I just got a silver tarp, helps reflect the sunlight, and a couple tent poles, a couple hand clips on the side here. Goes up and maybe like the whole thing, fifteen minutes. Tulsi Yellow Bear on Instagram. You can follow her. You can also follow me. It's uh, Christopher Ives, I-V-E-S. Um, that's my like photography and art account. Um, and then the van is called the Vitruvian Van. Again, and I say I'm on Instagram, Vitruvian Van, and also VitruvianVan.com. A new thing that I'm gonna be launching in the 
near future will be um, ecovan.org. Um, I realized that a lot of the stuff I learned in here uh, just wasn't available and if more people want to make their vans more eco-friendly or use eco-friendly practices and materials in it, it's just a disincentive for them to like, they can't find it anywhere. So I'm gonna try to collect all that information together and just put it as like a free resource for people to, to check out there. I like to keep moving. I really like seeing new things. It's always making me feel like my mind's expanding and growing and uh, I hope I see everybody on the road.